I fuck them. Fuck them. It's 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 no boy no. Taylor Swift didn't need lucrative side hustles to become a billionaire, says Forbes. So let's go through some of the things that she did that's different from what people usually do in the music business. And uh, we'll read through this. And I think this is the article here. Um, if not, I know we could actually let's go to let's go to we speak English good.com. We'll go to this news and we'll read through this one. And this is a good overview. And then we'll sort of break down through that. Taylor Swift is not only the most popular and influential singers in the world, but also one of the richest. According to Bloomberg, her net worth is estimated to be about $1.1 billion as of October 2023. She is one of the few entertainers who have reached this level of wealth based on their music and performance alone. How did she achieve this remarkable feat? The answer lies in her successful Eras tour, her concert film, and re-recorded albums. Uh, the Ayers tour, which featured songs from all her previous albums, has been breaking records and boosting the economy in the cities where she performed. The tour could gross close to $2.2 billion in North America's ticket sales alone, making it the highest grossing tour ever. Swift has been selling out stadiums and arenas across the continent, attracting millions of fans who want the experience of her music. So right there, $2.2 billion right off the bat in her just in the tour itself and now that's an estimate so let's kind of look into what's going on with that taylor swift two billion dollar tour um so it could be the highest grossing so Let's go. So she still has more dates in Europe as well, I believe. So it's really interesting to me to see that 2.2 is the estimate when she still has shit going on. I think that's why they're estimating is because they st she has still some European tours. But let's dig a little bit into that. I mean, it, besides being like an amazing visual, um... The show seems to be doing quite well. Obviously, people love Taylor Swift. They love... Um, what is the fuck is going on? Is this no longer work anymore? Um, so, Tina Knowles praises Beyonce and Taylor Swift for boosting the economy. See how much they've made. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, there it is. The 4 point billion, 4.1 billion. Cause I've been seeing, they said 2.2, .2, but I've been seeing 4 billion as well. Forget about songwriting. She's going to buy the chiefs and cut Travis Kelsey when it all goes sideways. Um, this is just a Reddit thread. This is not going to help me. Look, this tour says five time magazine says $5 billion. Good God. You don't have to be a Swifty to have been touched by some way by Taylor Swift's era tour. The stadium arena experience that kicked off in March, the tour which pays homage to every era of the artist's illustrious 17-year career. If you live in the 20 locales Swift 33 performed at in the last five months, your city has likely seen a boost in revenue from the hundreds of thousands of attendees who travel from near and far. If you don't or simply couldn't snag tickets across due to the cost and now infamous Ticketmaster snafu, chances are you've been uh, you've seen clips of three and a half hour show from celebrities Instagram. So, dude, three and a half hours. That's fucking nuts, man. I don't care who you are. Going three and a half hours straight is wild. Uh, why Ticketmaster's verified fan system is giving Taylor Swift fans made her headache. Yeah, I, I remember this happened. Uh, let's read what happened. Taylor Swift is going through going on tour for the first time since 2018 and that time ago okay blah 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 uh era set off in November 2020 all right uh okay yeah it's going to set back off it's going to kick off again in November the era's tour and that's when she's going to be doing her european things but swifties looking to attend the stadium tour ha are having major problems securing tickets 
Due in large to a part of a system of Ticketmaster called Verified Fan, the system was implemented to prevent scalpers, bots, scalper bots from buying up an already limited amount of tickets and reselling them as Swift and other artists like Bruce Springsteen, Paramore, Blink-182 plan tours for 2023. The limited number of tickets available through Verified Fan has resulted in soaring prices and rising anxiety. Per Ticketmaster, Verified Fan has been able to combat resellers creating skyrocketing prices after pre-sales. For big events, more than 30% of tickets might end up being resold. 30%? That's a fucking lot, bro. Um... <clears throat> Ticketmaster executive president David Marcus told Pop Sugar, "We saw less than five percent of tickets being resold for the show after using them." Okay, so it does work. Tickets for Era's tour went on pre-sale. Blah blah. blah. So it just gave them a bunch of bullshit, is what it was. Isn't that nice? Um, so kind of going back over here. Oh, no, wait, back to uh, We Speak English Good. So she's been doing really good. They're estimating that the tour is going to bring in near $5 billion, especially after this second leg. Obviously, she's not going to make all that money. That's not her money, right? $5 billion is not Taylor Swift's money. It takes, uh, it, it takes fucking travel. It, you know, she has backup dancers, musicians. She has people who are running lights, people who are driving semis. People are driving, you know, she has uh, people going out and buying her Skittles and shit. You know, all these different costs that go into these major tours. So she's not getting any of that. I mean, she's getting a big part of that, but she's not getting all of that is what I should say. So right there, successful tour, building her up, and um, uh, which is fucking A, man. You know, use it. Make hay while the sun shines, is what they say. Now, her film, which was crazy. I, if you guys have been seeing the film, her concert film, which premiered October 11th, earned about $96 million in the box office in the U.S. and Canada in its opening weekend, becoming the highest grossing concert film domestically for an opening weekend. The film captures the magic and spectacle of her era's tour with stunning visuals and sound quality. Fans who missed the chance to see her live or wanted to relive the experience could enjoy the film on the big screen. So, the era's film, Film. So here's what's cool about what she did with Eras. And, you know, the thing about Taylor Swift that you also got to admire is that she dates all these famous men, then has these breakups with them, and then it creates entire albums based on uh, fucking her heartbreak from her going around, hoeing around to different famous dudes. And right now, uh, famously, she's been dating that uh, football player, Travis something. I don't know what his name is. Uh, movie. So, Eras Tour movie. Taylor cuts out Hollywood. So, what I love about what Taylor Swift did. Bigger than Barbie. How Taylor Swift uh, angered Hollywood. Angered them. How dare she anger Hollywood? Let's see if this is even going to work. I don't know. See, this has not been working all fucking morning. Taylor Swift has... Okay. Maybe we need to go over to the We Speak English version here. We'll come back to this. Uh, what is this? Okay, here we go. We got more. We got lots of Taylor Swift news going on guys is there where did it hold on we're looking for taylor swift where is it Okay, that pisses me off. Never mind. Let's see if Fox lets us do it without having to ads. God damn you. Ads. Nearly a month after the completion of Taylor Swift's first U.S. concert leg, she is... 
See, I don't like it. Unavailable for legal reasons. Oh, they caught on. They caught the fuck on. Nearly a month. Let's see if this lets us do it. This one's on us. No one cares, bitch. All right, so here we go. How is Taylor Swift era's concert movie different from her live tour? Oh, no, that's so stupid. That's not it. Turn off my blogger. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I wish it would just stop doing that to me. All right, here we go. Sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm so prepared today. So she does an amazing thing. Um, and this will sort of give us uh, an outline of what's going on with it. I don't even know where mine is. Uh, I'm, we speak English good. Oh, I'd have to search. Christopher Nolan said Hollywood studios missed out by not releasing Taylor Swift's concert film. Taylor Swift era's tour since she distributed it directly through AMC. So what she did was cut out Hollywood and distributed the movie directly to AMC. She shot and funded the whole movie herself, and then she sold distribution through AMC. Brilliant. Brilliant. She cut out the middleman and went straight to distribution, which is brilliant. During a recent discussion at a City University of New York uh, event, the Oppenheimer filmmaker noted how the pop star bypassed studios and teamed directly with AMC's theaters to bring her movie to the big screen. Nolan spoke alongside his Oppenheimer producing partner and wife, Emma Thomas, who said that studios have been too skittish about releasing movies in the streaming era. Taylor Swift is about to show the studios because of her concert film is not being distributed by studios. It's being distributed by a theater uh, uh, by a theater owner, AMC, and it's going to make an enormous amount of money, Nolan said. And this is the thing. This is a format. This is a way of seeing things and sharing stories or sharing experiences that incredibly that that's incredibly valuable. So if you guys don't know who Christopher Nolan is, he's the guy who did the Batman, the Dark Knight Rises trilogy, um, and uh, lots of amazing movies. Uh, Taylor Swift, the era's tour, went to open a uh, record breaking $92.8 million domestically and $123.5 million globally during October 13th to the 15th, and also became the top grossing concert film of all time in North America and the second biggest October domestic debut, not adjusted for inflation. <laughs> Thank you. As for its own record breaking blockbuster, Oppenheimer, which debuted at number one in the biggest box office weekend ever with Barbie, no one has his own take on the complicated theatrical business. Anytime a film succeeds that isn't expecting to succeed, it's an encouraging thing for Hollywood. It's encouraging for filmmakers. No one explained there's always the tension in Hollywood between the familiar and what is predicted to make money, and that's the meat and potatoes of how the studios stay in business. But there's always this desire among audiences for something new, something fresh. He added, any time a film isn't expected to succeed, it vastly exceed. Okay, we, we get that. So she cuts out all of Hollywood, goes direct, and is making a shit ton of money. Shit tons. Yes, I agree, uh, Mighty Mighty. Way to go for her. Um, oh my God, I just wish that this thing wouldn't be so lame. Copy pasta. All right, give me a second. Do something real quick. I'm sick of this. They're not going to keep me from doing what I want to do. I do what I want to do whenever I want to do it. Morby! 
What's up, Morby? Welcome in. Thank you for coming over. Thank you for making a thingy and saying hi. How you been, my friend? I hope you are well. Finally, you did. You finally found your way here. Kick is such a, a, a new and exciting format, and I appreciate you coming over. Make sure if you're in the chat, uh, make sure you guys are hitting those uh, the follow button. I'm trying to get, what do you call it? Monetized. So I'm I'm gonna go and try to find a. There was no search bar for me. I thought, but it's kind of hidden behind my speaker too. <laughs> oh, I got you. I got you. No worries. No worries. We are here. We are here to help. I'm just trying to see why I can't see this Daily Mail freaking thing. Okay, so let, let's read in a little bit more details on what's going on with Taylor Swift and how come she's such a billionaire now. Uh... Taylor Swift has already conquered the music industry. Now she is reshaping Hollywood. Global pre-sales for her concert movie, Taylor Swift, The Heiress Tour, have reached record-breaking $100 million after she rejected involvement from major Hollywood studios and cut distribution deal with AMC Theaters directly. Swift's mom and dad, Scott and Andrea Swift, thrashed out terms with AMC CEO Adam Aaron during secret talks which lasted several weeks. Typically, movie producers will recruit a big name studio for marketing and distribution in exchange for a large chunk of the box office takings, but Swift and her family were reportedly disappointed by studio demands so they cut them out and went directly to AFC, the world's largest theater chain. That's fucking baller shit right there. It, it, there is nothing more baller than being like, fuck you establishment. I'm going to just do it myself because I'm fucking Taylor Swift. Yeah, baby. We back. We got those those sluts. The, the sluts, the butt sluts are back. I just got to add uh, Ric Flair and all that. I'm, I'm still trying to catch up, Morby. I hope you've been well. How you been, my friend? Uh, and the decision is likely to prove highly... Hold on. Uh... Typically, oh yeah, 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 and the decision is likely to prove highly profitable for Swift as the enormous pre-sale figures come alongside estimates of $100 million for opening weekend on October 13th. This year's top grossing movie Barbie netted $162 million in the debut weekend. The launch comes hot on the heels of the relationship with Kansas City Chiefs footballer Travis Kelsey, which tipped the perennial hype around Swift into all the out hysteria, which I agree, it did freak people out. They're like, oh my God, Taylor Swift is the best. And Hollywood executives are said to be furious about the AMC deal, which could reshape how producers distribute their movies. The movie signal that producers can go direct to theaters to distribute their work and theater chains like AMC, still reeling from the damage caused by COVID, can acquire big name movies without needing a middleman. Which, again, fuck the middleman. When you're trying to sell drugs, you don't want to buy from the middleman, you want to buy from the man. Uh, that's how you make the money. In a further sign of upheaval that comes when Hollywood is kept in the dark, the upcoming Exorcist movie has already had the change had to change its release date after a clash with the Swift film. So they changed their date because they were afraid of the Swifties. Uh, can't see lines, only emotes. Can't see my lines, only emotes. Well, that's weird. Now I see one. Oh. Come on, kick! Swift's era tour has already become a global phenomenon since it kicked off in March. The 146 show tour, which, yeah, we know that. The movie, directed by Sam Rinch, was mostly filmed across three shows at the SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California in 
August. Swiss father was connected to Aaron by a mutual friend about his crazy idea to put the movie directly in theaters and bypass studios and distribution processes, according to Puck. Her family was said to be disappointed. Yeah, we know that. The discussions with Aaron also came amid the ongoing SAG after strike, which has brought filming to a halt on many big name projects, leaving studios shuttered and theaters with shortage of blockbuster releases to look forward to. Swift was also able to agree to a deal with the union that meant work on the movie could go ahead without upsetting tens of thousands of industry professionals taking part in the writer's strike. From Swiss' perspective, the AMC deal has allowed her to distribute her film on her own terms without the role of Hollywood power players who could make up to 70% of income uh, 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 the film makes on opening weekends. So they can take up to 70% of the money. Fuck me, dude. That's crazy. Puck reported that Swiss' parents agreed to a deal with Aaron that left 43% of the gross with theaters and divided the remaining 50% of, uh, between Swift and AMC. Damn. It's not clear how much Swift will take 50% of split, but the pre-sale figures alone suggest that it'll be tens of millions of dollars. At least the film had a budget of 10 to $20 million. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's over. AMC has also appointed Ver, uh, Ver, Verions Films, an independent sub-distributor, to put the films on screens and other chains, including Regal and Cinemark. Oh, sick. Uh, the year's top-grossing film, Barbie, uh, blah, 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 the era's to Wow. Oppenheimer, the movie's third-highest-grossing movie's... Wow, that almost made a billion dollars. The Heirs Tour movie is on course to near Barbie's opening weekend. Uh, Swift is not believed to have sold the rights to streaming yet, but the deal allows it to appear on streaming services 13 weeks after cinema release. Wow, <laughs> shit. Striking a deal with AMC outside the Hollywood bubble has also caused a headache for other producers in upcoming releases. The movie's October 13th release date clashed with The Exorcist. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, but have you guys seen the Swifties? <laughs> this shit is so funny. Watch this shit. Swifties... At Era's movie. The shit is fucking crazy. Waving phone lights. Look at these fuckers. Aisles, even belting out lyrics at the top of your lungs. Look at these assholes. Look at them just dancing. Down. <laughs> Swans and Swifties can't control their excitement at the Era's tour concert film. Welcome to the Era's tour. Just as excited as I was to go see this actual show. I bet you were, baby. But this baby. morning, the movie mayhem has some saying. Amid a growing debate over movie theater <laughs> etiquette, some fans airing their frustrations on social media, calling scenes like this disrespectful. I want to hear Taylor sing, not y'all, one person wrote. <laughs> Another saying, suddenly, I don't want to go. I would fuck with that movie. Uh, Morby, I would fuck with that movie. I would watch the Eras movie. It would probably be the way to watch it. If you couldn't see it in person, going to the theater is probably the way to watch that movie. Uh, it's going to be coming out on streaming services in, in a few weeks. But still, like you want to see it on a big screen. And like the imagery from the concert looks spectacular. I imagine some live show footage... Yeah, the music I, and look, I'm not even hating on Taylor Swift. I'm not the biggest fan, but like, I would go see this. So loud, it spilled into theater hallways. People are getting mad because they're singing too loud. Some moviegoers bracing for potential interruptions during this weekend's highly anticipated release of Killers of the Flower Moon, the Martin Scorsese movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. Turn it down a notch. There are a few of us next door I'm trying to watch Killers of the Flower Moon. But those <laughs> who go. described the experience <laughs> as the most iconic thing and point to Taylor Swift's own words in defense. Era's attire, friendship bracelets, singing and dancing, encouraged, she wrote on Instagram when announced. Yo, Marby, you have no idea how hard the Swifties go. They go so hard. They, they, they divided the Swift. Swifties have divided themselves in the two camps, which we'll get there. Uh, her mo yeah, yeah, I know her most popular songs, too. But, I mean, the, the show looks the spectacular. 
and theaters around the world listened, dropping long-held decorum for the two-hour and 45-minute film that's already shattered domestic box office records for the genre, raking in nearly $93 million in its opening. I'm wondering where it's at now. Um, how much has the era's tour movie made so far i think that's the wrong kind of made so far let's see um 123 million officially making swiss tour though okay yeah but that's not that's six days ago so the official number right now is $123 million for opening weekend. But like, well, how much has it made thus far? Which we can go to... We'll, we'll see what AI says. How much has the Eras Tour movie made since opening weekend to now let's just see oh oops <laughs> i just did that right in the middle of the thing oh by the way guys if you didn't know you can actually earn points by using bing and it translates into actual like real world stuff. So like I can transfer these points into Amazon gift card or an Xbox gift card. I'll show you actually. So look, I have 1800 points right now. And look at you search with Bing. You get all these things. There's different ways to get more points. Um let me see Elizabeth okay so the okay so so far the era's tour has made a total of 203 million dollars worldwide opened up at 93 million dollars 30 million dollar international making the biggest global weekend concert the movie also broke domestic opening weekend record for concert film previously held by Justin Bieber which made 73 million dollars in 2011 the movie has been praised by critics okay blah 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 Anyways, real quick, make some real schmeckles. Yeah, so like if you want to look at like what you can get. Um, oh, wait. So you can do like different things to get it. What is this? Congratulations. Thanks for a click to redeem your prize. Earn 50 Microsoft points. Earn five. Complete this puzzle. Get 10 points. Get 250 points. Uh, scan six valid receipts 14 days so here's like the stuff this is how you can get more points but uh, let me see how do I I guess you go to redeem so here you go so you can get for 6,500 points you can get a, a Amazon gift card you can for 3,000 points you can get a Roblox card 200 points you can get a um, into a sweepstakes you can 200 points sweepstakes it'll get you into assassin's creed mirage i know i know oh here i know is he's oh do it do it look i can get a gift card right now if i wanted to this is game pass core membership for 8500 points uh skype unlimited <sighs> who wants skype unlimited so here's all kinds of stuff like you can get burger king and shit and this is just from using bing so I'm just letting you guys know right now if you guys use Bing for anything. I use it a it lot. It smells very sweaty and gross in here. Thank you, Sophie. Um, if you guys use Bing, um, I use it for the AI, um, but I don't really use I use Google mostly. Yeah, welcome to the man cave. So there you go. Just some extra information for y'all. Um so overall she's made over 200 million dollars on the freaking movie and um like just look at some fucking the set is so fucking cool for the taylor swift era's movie 
Is this the f trailer? Okay, let's just look at the trailer. Welcome to the Eras Tour. This has been the most extraordinary experience of my entire life. People would come up to me and they'd be like, "You're gonna just like do your do thing a show with like Morbs. all the albums in it." And I was like, "Yeah, it's 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 gonna be called the Eras Tour." I mean, just really spectacular stuff. Uh, looks really cool. So, yeah. Um, you can tell it was a well-thought-out tour. Props to her. She made a killing. Uh, okay. And so... Where is... I gotta go back. <laughs> no stupid... Um, okay. And then, of course, um, Taylor Swift is re-releasing. So, so we know that her Eras tour put her over the edge. We know the movie's going to fucking murder the game for her. Uh, but she also re-released. So Swift has also been re-releasing her old albums with new recordings. After her former label sold her master recordings in 2019, her latest re-release of is 1989 Taylor's version, which came out October 27, 2023. The original album earned 10 Grammy nominations when it was released in 2014. Swift has been reclaiming her artistic ownership and giving her fans new versions of classic songs. I would hate to pay taxes i hate paying taxes now <laughs> i would hate to pay taxes then so it's crazy why is taylor swift re-recording her music it's crazy because she's re-recording her music now and for a good reason and again, this is her sort of cutting people out. It's like she's cutting out all these toxic relationships. <laughs> uh, and this is old news, honestly. This is uh, this is this is uh, Taylor Swift has just announced she'll be re-recording 1989 in true Swiftian fashion. Swift began releasing her re-recorded music in April 2021 when she dropped Fearless Taylor's version, a take on the 2008 sophomore outing. It was followed by Red Taylor's version, released October of the same year, which drew its buzz from the release of a new 10-minute long version of Swift's classic All Too Well. In July, 2000, uh, July this year, she dropped Speak Now, uh, and so she's been dropping all these things. So the whole process began... Through, uh, though back in 2019, that's when the news broke that Swift's old record label, Big Machine Records, which she left in 2018, had been sold to music ma mega manager Scooter Braun, who is kind of a douche. Uh, the sale gave Braun the rights to all the master recordings for Swift's old music, meaning that anyone who wanted to license one of Swift's old songs to play in a TV show or movie, or an ad, would have to ask Braun's permission to pay and pay him a licensing fee. And given that Braun used to work with sworn Taylor Swift enemy Kanye West, Swift was devastated. In an emotional Tumblr post, she calls the news my worst case scenario. Not long afterwards, in, a NV, uh, in an interview with CBS's Tracy Smith, Swift said that she planned to sidestep Braun by re-recording everything in the songbook that he now owns, meaning all the songs she had released prior to August 2019 album Lover. What a huge endeavor that is to have to go and re-record all your own music. When Swift switched over to Republic Records in the fall of 2018, she negotiated to own the master's rights Master writes to all the music she creates going forward. So by re-recording her old songbook with Republic Records, she will own the copyright to all the new songs. The or the recordings, excuse me. The move would give licensors the option to work directly with Swift and her team rather than go through Braun. And that, in turn, would allow Swift to reclaim some command over her music and how it's used. So she's still her music is still controlled by Scooter Braun. Who is a who is a, a twat of a human being, um, but now you have the option to to go direct, and she's seeing how like just getting rid of the middleman is just the way to go. 
While recording her old masters, Swift kept busy throughout the pandemic. In 2020, she surprised dropped two new albums, July's Folklore and December's Evermore, and now she has three of her earlier albums back out in the world on her own terms. Naders! Taters! Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. We're just going over how cool Taylor Swift is in business. She's uh, she's definitely leveraging her fame in the best possible way to make the most amount of money. Which, again, I'm not the biggest Taylor Swift fan, but I do have mad respect over her business practices and how she's saying fuck you to all these, uh, you know, to these greedy, non-creative uh, uh, corporate masters who are trying to enslave her and her music. So I, uh, I, I, I big shout out, big shout out to Taylor Swift for taking on her own shit. Um, so yeah, she's re-recording her albums to sort of cut people out of the, the cut people out of the pie. It's her pie. She made the pie. She has co-written or written all of her own songs in since she started i believe she she has the right to own it she has the right to own it um so taylor swift let's see we'll go through a little bit of this and see what it says swift's network doesn't largely derive from profitable side hustles think beauty brands fashion lines alcohol investments no credit to all her exes <laughs> yeah exactly well her exes also get love too because that's how she comes up with her material, right? Uh, which have been typical re avenues for music icons to, to, and entertainers become billionaires in recent years. So, like, a good example of that is Fenty Beauty from Rihanna. She became a billionaire off of her side hustles. So that's what they're talking about. For example, Jay-Z's alcohol brands... Um, his entertainment company, uh, Title Rock Nation, and his stakes in a company like Uber propelled the hip hop star to become a billionaire in 2019. August 2021, Rihanna reached the milestone with her cosmetic brand, Fenty Beauty, a joint venture, blah, blah, blah. But in a rare feat, Swiss billionaire status was achieved largely by music, which puts her unique in a unique category with artists like Bruce Springsteen, who earned $1 billion from the on the road touring. Uh, more than $500 million of Swiss fortune is from music royalties and touring. She had, she had an estimate of $190 million after taxes from the first leg of the era's tour and another $35 million from the first two weeks of screenings of the corresponding concert film Taylor Swift Eras. Uh, the movie. Meanwhile, another 500 million of her earnings came from the increasing value of her music catalog. Her master's Swiss first six albums were infamously purchased by Scooter Braun and eventually sold to Shamrock Capital for $300 million in 2020. Uh, at the time, okay, so we read through that. Um, blah, blah, blah. So, wow. They didn't even do a good enough. They didn't even cover all of the shit that I was, that I covered in my fucking article. They didn't even cover the shit. Anyways, Taylor Swift is doing great. Obviously, we all know who Swift is, but the Swifties are a whole different breed of themselves. It's it's interesting to think that the Swifties have sort of divided themselves. And, and it's all over this whole um, Israel and Hamas war. And it's so strange to me. I mean, even on a bigger level, you're seeing the left get divided. <laughs> it's crazy to see how much more division can be placed in between the good people of the world, especially in the Western world, because you have people who who are uh, championing this attack on Israel because of the years of apartheid and, and atrocities committed to the Palestinian people uh, by the Israelis. And then you have people who are like, hey, leave the Jews alone. They don't need this shit. <laughs> so there's a huge divide. And, and I think, again, as, as a professional fence sitter that I am, um, you can be able, you can fucking say Hamas is a terrorist organization that did a horrible thing to the Israelis. Um, 
you can condemn Hamas, but also condemn the treatment of the Palestinians for the last, you know, what, 50 years by the Israelis. You can condemn both. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Hey, Hamas, leave those Jews. <laughs> hey, Hamas, leave those Jews alone. Doom, doom. All in all, it's just a, another Jew in the wall. Okay, that's not good. We better stop there. <laughs> that's not good. All in all, it's just a, another Jew at the wailing wall. There you go. You could be the new Roger Waters. Just saying. I don't have that uh, gravelly old man voice. An angry bass playing that he does. I don't have that in me. I can't spit into into a fan's face. Uh, I, I just don't have that in me. Um, so what ended up happening is really, really interesting. So, again, we're in the split. And we're all susceptible to it. Even the Swifties are susceptible to to division swifties unite swifties for pa hashtag swifties for palestine trend calls for S taylor swift support where is this emo milana i know i'm going to i'm gonna put all that shit in here it's coming back y'all swear to god just trying to figure this shit out okay it's gonna happen uh, the world of Taylor Swift fans, affectionately known as Swifties, is renowned for its unwavering support of their beloved artists. But amidst the excitement surrounding the release of 1989, Taylor's version, a different kind of message is reverberating within the passionate community. The trending hashtag Swifties for Palestine has illuminated a sobering reality, a plea for Taylor Swift, Taylor Nation, and 13 management staff to lend their voice to the plight of the Palestinian people. So Swifties are calling for Taylor Swift to speak out for the Palestinians. It's indeed a challenging time for Swifties. <laughs> I love writing in a, uh, in a uh, news format, in a journalist format, or however you call it. It's indeed a challenging time for Swifties. The anticipation of reliving the magic of 1989 is palpable, but an undeniable shadow looms over the celebration. The ongoing suffering of the Palestinian people has prompted a moral dilemma, focusing, forcing the Swifties to reevaluate their priorities. The heart-wrenching situation in Palestine is uh, characterized by ethnic cleansing, unrelated or unrelated, unrelenting airstrikes and escalating ground invasion, all orchestrated by Israel and supported by Western nations, including the United States, the UK. The grim statistics tell a harrowing story. As of October 28th, there have been 7,703 Palestinian deaths, with 3,595 of them being children aged 18 or under. Uh, these numbers do not have an account for those trapped between uh, beneath the rubble of destroyed buildings, infrastructure, and communication networks disclaimed by Israeli forces or decimated by, excuse me, decimated. This is not merely a conflict. It is, as many are now calling it, a genocide. It is a call to action, a demand for empathy, and a plea for justice. Swifties are urging their idol and her management team to stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people. The requests are straightforward. So this is what they want Taylor Swift and her management company to do. <laughs> Number one, issue a statement in support of the Palestinian people that calls for immediate ceasefire. Which is fine, which I think it would be a great thing if there was a ceasefire, right? Uh, if no more people had to die, I, I think that would be a fantastic outcome of this whole situation. Um, so it's not unreasonable, but if I was Taylor Swift's management team and her PR team, I would be telling Taylor Swift to stay as far as the fuck away from this subject as possible. Do not stick your nose in this. <laughs> you don't want any of this. I mean, it would just be, it would be, it's almost, it would almost be as bad as Taylor going on and being like, 
uh, going on TV or going online and saying uh, <laughs> trans women are not real women, right? Like th that would that would be it would be almost the same um, reaction, right? So, um, it, it, I mean, it's still crazy to think about how, I mean, last month, right, before the attack happened, it's factual though, um, yeah, um, it's so interesting to me to think that before the attack, saying anything in support of Palestine was almost considered anti-Semitic. But now it's like, if you don't support Palestine, then it's like not supporting Black Lives Matter, right? Because it's the same motherfuckers. George Soros is funding. George Soros is funding pro-Palestine. Um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Pro-Palestine uh, uh, marches. What is that called? Fuck, dude. Protest. George Soros is a fucking Jew who by the way also sold out Jews when he was a young kid he was working with the Nazis uh he was a Nazi uh they didn't realize he was a Jew and he was he was selling his fellow Jews up the river to the Nazis so if that tells you anything about who George Soros is let me make sure let's fact check George Soros funds pro Palestine protests what do you want? George Soros funneled over $15 million to pro-Palestine groups behind protests. George Soros, a Hungarian-American philanthropist who slammed Prime Minister uh, earlier this year, calling him no Democrat. So he has paid $15 million, and this is from the Jewish News Syndicate. Soros funneled $15 million behind pro-Hamas protest. Uh, since 2016, Hungarian Jewish billionaire George Soros has funneled over $15 million of groups behind recent pro-Hamas protests in New York City, or I'm sorry, the United States. The New York Post review of a Soros-funded Open Society Foundation's records found that the grant-making network provided $13.7 million dollars a million dollars of the money through Tide Center, a left-wing advocacy group. For example, Tides donated the Adala Justice Project in Illinois. Adala posted October 7th, the day of the massacre, a picture of a bulldozer ripping through Israel's Gaza security fence with the caption, Israeli colonizers believe that they could indefinitely trap 2 million people in open-air prison. No cage goes unchallenged. Again, right, this is this is very real shit, right? Like, you can't keep people penned up like that, controlling their every move, controlling their water, their resources, and not expect someone to, to fight back. Eventually, people are going to fight back. Um, the way they did it was cowardice and bullshit, um, you, killing babies and raping women and murdering families in their homes is cowardice, garbage, bullshit. It's, it's the lowest form of battle. Uh, but also bombing, uh, bombing 2 million people in an open air prison is pretty reprehensible as well. Um, I know they're talking about some ground invasion type stuff because right now it's just, they're just fucking dropping bombs on people. It's not, you know... Are they actually killing anybody in Hamas? Are they getting these people? Who knows? All we know is that every day I see babies getting taken out of uh, of mounds of rubble, dead and limp and black and blue and bloody. It's fucking horrendous. Um, I, 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 I got to say that Israel has every right to defend itself. And I they definitely should be going and hunting down these dogs. Who fucking did those horrible things. Um, but there has to be a better way than just blowing motherfuckers up. Just, I know that's how we do it here in the States. We just fucking throw bombs at it. Yes, using pistols would have been better eye for an eye. Well, I mean, they were, they were bombing things too. You know, the Hamas was bombing innocent people as well. But 
I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, there's better ways of doing this rather than just dumping bombs on children. Um, they can go in. They can they can go in. They they have they have the best fucking uh, the Mossad is some of the best intelligence, one of the best intelligence organizations in the world. You're telling me they can't figure this shit out? You're also telling me that they didn't know about this after they were warned? You're also telling me that $6 billion was given to Iran <laughs> days before the attack that was sponsored by Iran? What the fuck's going on here? Uh, okay, so group members also occupy California rep Ro Kana's office demanding a sign and resolution calling for a ceasefire. I'm all about the ceasefire. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan explained the motive behind the ceasefire calls on CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday. What a lot of people are calling for is just to stop the Israeli military action against terrorists, period. Just stop. No more Israel. No more Israel cannot go after terrorists who conducted these largest, the largest massacre Jews since the Holocaust. We have taken the position that Israel has the right to defend itself against terrorist attack. I'm going to go with that position as well. They definitely have the right to fucking defend themselves and they should go and get those fucking pieces of shit who did those horrible things to the Israelis. But they can just go in and can't they just, it can be a little bit more precise, can it? It can. It can. They're just mad. The Post reported that Adala co-sponsored a rally in New York City's Bryant Park on October 20th where protesters yelled anti-Semitic chants and waved a sign, I do not condemn Hamas. (sighs) I do not condemn Hamas. That's a pretty harsh thing to say. You're basically saying it's cool for people to go and murder and rape, you know, women and kill children and murder innocent people in their homes. Uh, Which, again, that's what, the is Israelis were doing, but again, they're, they're, it's a bigger process than that, right? It's not just let's go kill innocent people. There's the international community f- failed horribly. In any case, I'm not gonna sit here and talk like I know, like I'm an expert. So, <laughs> the fuck do I know? The Arab American Association of New York, a group co-founded by Linda Sarfer, a BDS supporter widely accused of anti-Semitism, received $60,000 in 2018 from the Open Society Foundation. So the Open Society Foundation is a foundation founded by George Soros, who funds all these different uh, social justice causes around the country. George Soros funded the BLM riots, and now he's funding uh, pro-Palestine riots. <laughs> I don't think they're riots yet, uh, but they probably will be. They'll probably be riots. Um, the Post, uh, anyways, so yes, uh, George Soros, the Nazi Jew. Let's see. Let's go a little bit more into George Soros. George Soros false claims. No, it's not false claim. Falsely linked George Soros and the Nazi. How is that false? That's not false at all. They're fact checking it. Let's see what they say. Um, let's see what they say so the 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 story is soros is not a form Reuters debunked the false claim that a photograph shows young Nor- soros in nazi uniform here during the time the nazis were active soros would not have met the age requirements to be a whatever that says soros and his family were hungarian jews who lived in budapest during the war disguised Disguised their identities for safety in 1947 at the age of 17, Soros moved to London and attended university. And so here's this picture. Where is the... Where, where is the... Where's the pictures, bitches? See post, bitch. So here's supposedly... Remember this next time a Soros-funded liberals call you racist, fascist, or a Nazi... Here's George Soros as a Nazi. 
uh, dressed in a Nazi gear. So they're saying he wasn't a Nazi, but they were disguised as Nazis. So that's a real picture. It's just that they were disguised and he wasn't actually. In 2015, Oscar Groening was found guilty of being an accessory to mass murder and sentenced to four years in prison. It was likely to have been the big last big Holocaust trial. His job was to collect... Okay, I don't know. Oh, okay. His job was to collect the belongings of deportees after they arrived at a camp by train and had been put through a selection process that resulted in many being sent directly to the gas chambers. He inspected their luggage, removing and counting any banknotes. Um... Uh, what? Uh, he inspected their luggage, removing any and counting any banknotes that were inside, and sending them off to SS officers in Berlin, where they would help, where they were helped to fund the Nazi war effort. Groening said that he was an enthusiastic Nazi when he was sent to work at Auschwitz in 1942 at the age of 21. George Soros was born in 1930. Soros would have been 12 years old. When the man in the photograph joined the SS and was nine when World War II broke out, Reuters was unable to confirm the day of the photo was taken, but even if this was in the war's final year, Soros would have been 14 or 15 years old. Uh, 1943, the mandatory age for boys to serve in the military was 17. Hmm. Um, Soros and his family were Hungarian Jews and lived in Budapest throughout... Uh, the war with false identity papers hiding in their background in 1947 at the age of 17. So, okay. By the time Soros was 17, the fall of Nazi Germany had already happened. Therefore, Soros could not have been involved in the Nazi party. The photo, the photograph shows Oscar Groening, not George Soros. This arc, arc. Okay. So, so is that true though? Who's fact-checking who here, bitch? Here's the thing, though. He is fucking... Here's the obvious truth, is that George Soros... George Soros is actively funding protests against his own people. George Soros is funding pro-Palestine protests, even though he's a Jew who survived the, the Holocaust. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, so, I guess he wasn't a Nazi? George Soros wasn't a Nazi. Okay, well, I guess he wasn't a Nazi. We'll just go with the official narrative. I'm going off of what uh, Alex Jones says. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, uh, it's still fucked up. And it's still fucked up that George Soros funds all these different <sighs> protests that end up in violence, firebombing stuff. Really interesting shit here. Um, okay, so let me go over here back to what we were talking about, which is right here. So they want, they want Taylor Swift to issue a statement in support of the Palestinian people that calls for immediate ceasefire. Not a terrible thing, but still, it's a lot to ask. <laughs> Refrain from attending NFL games until the NFL releases a statement advocating for a ceasefire. So until NFL starts to um until the nfl starts to uh speak out against israel then you know let's boycott withhold the release of the eras tour movies to any company with funding ties to Israel, such as ties, until such ties are severed. The Swifties are aware that their call to action may come to at the expense of their own excitement, but they are willing to make that sacrifice. For in the face of injustice and suffering, it's now more important than ever to speak out so that no voices of the oppressed do not remain forever silenced. So let's read through this. So this was a group of of um, posts that I got from uh, Twitter. 
And this is what was trending yesterday. So uh, we in the Taylor Swift community are writing today to call for those mentioned above to advocate for the Palestinian people. The Gaza Ministry of Health has released full list of all victims of this genocide. The list does not account for the Palestinians who are under the rubble and destruction of buildings, mosques, hospitals, bakeries, and more infrastructure from Israeli airstrikes. Israel has destroyed communication infrastructure in Gaza, preventing Palestinians from speaking out about the atrocities that have been done to them. It's now more important than ever to speak so their voices do not remain forever silenced. This is a genocide. Another panel says, we know this comes at a challenging time as the release of 1989 Taylor's version should be exciting. However, we in the Taylor Swift community cannot continue to celebrate this long-awaited album in good conscience due to the ongoing suffering of the Palestinian people. Palestinians are being ethnically cleansed and Gaza is being bombed to the ground with constant airstrikes and an escalating ground invasion at the hands of Israel and and backed by United States, UK, and other Western nations. As of October 28th, the deadliest and most destructive night since to October 7th, there have been 7,703 Palestinian deaths, 3,595 Palestinians killed in Gaza were children aged 18 or under. We urge Taylor Swift and, the, and Taylor Nation and 13 management staff to the following. Put a statement out and support Palestinian people that calls for media ceasefire. Stop attending NFL games until the NFL releases a statement calling for a ceasefire. Do not release the era's tour movie to any company that is funding ties to Israel, such as Disney, until they fully cut ties. We thank you in advance for supporting the Palestinian people. So this is what they put out. <laughs> Uh, it, it's funny to me to think that the Swifties are getting all political. It, it's hilarious, honestly. Um, let's go and look. Let's see if, um, let's see what people are saying. Swifties for Palestine. It comes right up. Comes right up. Uh, so, uh, let's see, what are some, uh, I'm trying to find some really solid, oh, I guess this one has some let's just read through what it says um what do you mean silence i mean silence <laughs> so what do you want her to say they she stopped responding this is a kid who got bombed in palestine that sucks i put her close to my heart for over 16 years i can't stand with her if she choose to stand with hamas terrorism Hamas is in is the result of years of oppression Israel put Palestine Palestine through. It still does not justify Israel wanting to openly erase two million people. Their self defense has killed all Hamas about eight thousand plus Palestinians using Hamas as an excuse to ethnic cleanse and mass murder. Ooh. The sense of entitlement some people have to think they can pressure Taylor with a written statements or hashtags regarding who she dates or what stand she takes on a given issue is shocking. I don't care about who she dates, but when her own country is funding genocide, her silence only means she's part of the problem. She's the oppression. <laughs> it's that simple. If Taylor doesn't come out and say nothing, she's oppressing people. Oh my god, it's as dumb as silence is violence. It's so fucking stupid. Shut the fuck up. Uh, Taylor re-recording this way before this. You shouldn't tie her together with it. Beyond the point, this isn't about her re-release. Let me summarize and tell you what she's asking to speak up against genocide. You don't have to you don't have to tell people how you feel about every fucking issue out there. It's not, it's not important. Girl, she can stop a war. 
She, oh, she cannot stop a war. Not a war. Call for what it is. Genocide. She's complicit. She's complicit. <laughs> Taylor Swift is complicit. The bitch. Taylor Swift is murdering Palestinian babies. God damn it, Taylor Swift. Oh. Uh, please boycott Starbucks and McDonald's to advocate a ceasefire now. Yeah, so Starbucks is supporting Israel, so is McDonald's. So they're calling for boycotts. Ceasefire in Gaza and the West Bank. Stay on the right side of history. Everybody thinks they're on the right side of history. Let's see what these people... Uh, tagging Che, I have tagged all my mutual friends because we need people. It's just wild to me how split the left has become over this issue. It's so wild to me. I mean, it's not surprising, but it's just wild. Hoping like hell I don't get my accounts uh, suspended. My God, they tagged all these people. Please keep music out of the war. Music is supposed to bring people together, and choosing one side will obviously make the other feel left out. Better would be support Palestine, but without using this hashtag, that could be cause a divide. That seems rational, but I bet people are going to respond irrationally. Bestie, no. This is fucking genocide. This isn't just politics anymore. If you have empathy in your heart, then please keep resharing and getting involved, guys. Obviously, anything for a fellow Swifty, no doubt. Just wanted to share my thoughts. That's all. I really do hope this ends soon. Take care. Uh, how come Taylor can speak about sex and misogyny, homophobia, racism? She even wrote a song about school shootings, but can't speak out against genocide. I love Taylor so much, but I'm so hurt. <laughs> I'm so hurt. I'm hurt that Taylor Swift's not coming out against Israel. Ah! <laughs> Oh, there is a certain amount of entitlement that's going on here. It's pretty fucking ridiculous. Um, start sewing your hijab. Oh, God. I think we can also show so solidarity for Palestine in the Eras concert and movie Palestine Friendship, Friendship Bracelets. <laughs> I desperately wish we, uh, she would make a statement and take action about this. But even if she won't, we will. Jesus Christ. Again, if I was on her management team and her PR team, I would say, do not open your fucking mouth about the Israel-Hamas war. Do not fucking do that. Just keep fucking your little fucking NFL boyfriend and hanging out with his mom and making us millions of dollars and shut your fucking mouth. Which she's doing. She's not saying a goddamn thing about anything. Uh... <laughs> Uh, mixing up corporations and forced political stances isn't helping. Just boycott companies that do things you don't like. <gasps> Why is Eminem trending? Uh, give him. I think I can explain. Shady rated R merch drop. Oh shit! They got a merch drop. We got a merch drop. 